Welcome to Now Try This. Normally I do a countdown and I forgot this time. Uh, I'm Marcus and that's Nick. Sorry I caught you off guard, bud. I was completely, I was picking my nose. I was wiping my ass. I was not ready. Guys, welcome to the show. Now try this. We're two best friends. Try stuff. What does that mean? That means every week we challenge each other to try one of our favorite things. But today... Like every beginning of the month, technically it's the second week, don't kill us. At the beginning of the month, we give you the power. That's right. Today is sponsored by patreon.com slash now try this cast because of you guys is your because of your, your generosity. Yeah, that's the word. Nailed it. <laughs> you got all you guys is generous. Where is that? What accent is that? What, what uh because of your generosity, we are able to keep the podcast alive and patrons just like Joseph Cruz gets you at the five dollar tier make a suggestion every month like he did this month and everyone even the dollar tier gets to vote on that suggestion and you guys have spoken and today marcus what are we doing today we are doing the movie the black phone wait 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 fear god of death which is joseph's call him out uh better late than never what do you mean you win all the goddamn time <laughs> <laughs> no i think he means late as in you've won like three late. times i think he means what? better late than never in terms of starting the podcast late no that can't be it <laughs> <laughs> marcus how are you today are you excited to talk about this movie we have watched called black phone i am uh, pumped to talk about this movie because i feel like I love horror movies. I'm a horror boy boy and I want to watch. And you love. Yeah. And I love children being kidnapped and locked in mm -hmm. basements. It's my favorite thing. Listen, yeah. I am so excited. Oh, if you're a method. Yes, Marcus. He also loves kids being stolen yeah. from vans. It's you Good know job. what? When you're a horror movie aficionado like me and fear God of death in the chat, you just you know, you really appreciate the subtleties. You know what I'm saying? What does it take to be an aficionado? And am I, am I uh, an aficionado yet? Do, have I watched enough horror movies at this point? Okay, here's when you become an aficionado. Okay. I, I feel like you are there, but not like as willing of a participant. <laughs> You know what I, I mean? I like horror movies. You do, you do like horror movies. I'm oh, way Joseph more picky says than not you yet. are, though. When you're not picky, that's that's the point where you're an aficionado. Gotcha. When you're like, I'm not I will watch yet. anything because you just are craving horror content so much, then yeah. you can criticize it well, for yeah. sure. But it's when you <laughs> will watch the bad stuff and be, find some enjoyment from it because <laughs> just because it's horror. That's when you're like a true horror guy. So what I'm hearing from you, Marcus, is because I like Texas Chainsaw Massacre and you did it. I'm the aficionado and you're not. No, it's not about liking Heard. it. Loud and clear. It's Loud about, and clear. It's about Heard. watching it. Because it, when we get to this movie, we don't know if I liked it. Oh, that Jamster dude, he said, love this movie. He also loved Texas Chainsaw <laughs> Massacre. It's all against you, Marcus. That's <laughs> He means the black phone. That's I'm taking advantage of the delay. Means. Fair enough, fair Marcus, enough. We have done a lot of horror movies on this show. Can you name some of them? We've done Jason X. We've done Freddy versus Jason. We've done Leprechaun 1 and Leprechaun... Back to the hood? Return back in the back hood. To, back in the hood, something like that. I forgot. Uh, we've done we Hereditary. Hereditary. We've done Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Mm -hmm. A lot of lot of stuff. There's ones that I'm forgetting. We There's do Spooky more. Boys Halloween, Month every Halloween year. Halloween kills. We do. We do Spooky Boys Month every year. So be sure to follow us on all the socials and stay tuned for that coming up in a couple months. Yeah, and I just I I I want it to be known that we do not shy away from horror movies. We expect them. We mm -hmm. like the challenges. But I'm just confused, Marcus, because like. There's so many horror movies out in the world. Yeah. Why not give us a good one? You know, like, I, I just don't understand. Like, there's, there's so many I haven't seen. There's so many out there coming out periodically all the time that come with critical acclaim. Sure. Nope, just came out. I haven't seen it. That would have been a great challenge. Mm -hmm. But instead, we did. We've done oh, Nick, the Black Phone. I got to fight you on this one. I'm not saying this movie is good, but I do disagree with the fact <laughs> about critical acclaim because... This movie, I think, as far as I see, has like a 90% or 89% or something like that. 
Maybe pretty three. good on Rotten Tomatoes for a horror film. That's pretty high. Other than yeah. Jordan Peele's movies, not a lot of horror movies get that rating. You know what? Fair. That's really fair. Yeah. That's super duper fair. I, would I say, have a lot to say about this movie. Sure. I would I, say I this that. is one of the more critically acclaimed horror movies that have come out that aren't nope. Not critically acclaimed. Yeah, I, just I like well reviewed recall. across the board. Let's look. Horror movies. And, it's, and we have the technology. Horror movies in 2022. We got Prey. We've got Men. We've got X. We got Firestarter. X was I bad. I haven't watched any of these movies. Firestarter was bad. Scream. People like Scream. Scream was okay. Scream. I kind of liked it, but it wasn't great. Hatching. The Privilege, Fresh, The Requiem, Hypochondriac. That Jamster dude asked if X was bad. I haven't seen it. You can I, OK, I a lot of people loved X. X is well rated among the f- horror community. Everyone loves X. I saw X and I felt like the metaphors are only metaphors if you don't blatantly say that they're metaphors. You know what I mean? If you don't blatantly explain everything, then it's not really a metaphor it didn't leave much to the imagination and i feel like i i don't know i was done with the movie halfway through marcus i guess i'm just gonna have to disagree with you i think we need more vin diesel in our lives i think that's okay and Mm -hmm. i think we need to accept him more vin diesel yeah that's triple x nick this is one x singular x Mm, singular x well then then my argument is not enough vin diesel (laughs) not (laughs) you know that's my review for x weirdly not enough vin diesel weirdly i agree with you <laughs> we're there, we're X, and now X we're both horror doing. movie aficionados. <laughs> Boom goes the dynamite. They are making a sequel oh, to uh, X, which is called Pearl. And I also I will not be watching that one. I gave X a chance, and it just was not my jam. Well, honestly, I kind of want to watch it now to see what the what the, where the hype is. Uh, and then also Doctor Strange: Multiverse of Madness. Yeah, X I would is, say that's my favorite. That's fair. X is one of the few horror movies where I was like, man, I was really enjoying the setup to the horror more than the horror that happened i was like once the horror started i was like this movie's boring but when before the horror i was like oh these characters are interesting they're like i would watch more of them that's so interesting because usually what makes and breaks horror movies is not premise the premises are usually like in like weird and interesting it's just a shitty movie but it sounds like the movie was like made well sure 100 percent. but like the conceit of the killing was dumb yeah, you're just like, yeah, 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 that's that's fair. The I, I was dumb. I, Once it started, I was like, I don't care. It's not as yeah. suspenseful as I would like it to be. The whole movie is made and braid in that main yeah. made or broken in that moment. But the, totally. the setup was great. I also heard they them was interesting. I that heard, just came out. I heard it was weirdly racist, not racist, just like deaf. It wasn't handled the best way, I think, uh, is basically what and the I whole mo- the whole point of a, for putting something front and center like that is to like handle it well. Like, yeah. That's the, Interesting. Oh, apparently they saw Hatchling in the chat and they thought it was weird, pretty good and crazy. Well, next month on the Patreon, you can give it to us as a challenge at patreon.com slash now try this cast. That's right. You guys just walked into a trap. This was an ad for our Patreon. Welcome and thank you for being part of the commercial. Uh, Marcus, before we get to Black Phone, la, 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 you're, you're going to tell me what our challenge is next week or do you need to the end of the podcast? I've never watched the hatching. Oh, the hatching, not the hatchling. People are saying the hatchling in the chat. The hatching. Oh. Okay. That looks good. It's the hatch. I want to watch that shit. Next week, Nick, your movie. I wanted to I'm get away from getting away from horror, getting away from mm. stressful things. I want to watch I want you to watch one of the best pieces. Are you going to give me another woodworking of, challenge? A film that I've ever seen in my life. Okay. It's an epic tale. Can I tell you, can I interrupt you like epically right now and just say I Googled the hatching and the first picture is a little girl on her bed with a teddy bear with a giant egg. I really want to watch the hatching. I didn't. I've Um, never known about this. I have never heard about this movie until today. And I apparently have to redeem, like re-give, give back my horror card because this shit looks good. and I want to watch it. Sorry. So please go back. An okay. epic tale, a Nick, masterpiece your of challenge cinema. Next week is one of the greatest pieces of film I've ever seen in my life, and it's Holy not shit. an American film. It's a foreign that film, Nick. That doesn't surprise me at all. The <laughs> movie is R R R. I've never, I've never heard of this. I've never seen. 
Is this a Bollywood movie? Yeah, baby. Are you it's making me good. watch a shitty Bollywood movie? No, no, no. Shitty? Shitty? Are you going to call my challenge uh, shitty? Nick, this is an, a masterpiece epic. It's it's beautiful. I watched it and I had so much joy the entire time. It was an an incredible ride the entire way through. Okay. I, I'll be honest. I've never actually watched a full on Bollywood movie. Nick, uh, do I have to go to the theater to watch this? No, it's on a Netflix. Everyone listening, oh, okay. it's on Netflix. So watch yeah, it and great. join us for next week's episode. I would say here's here's you my got the one honest thing. trailer treatment. It's like big. Okay, my one right. thing. Please, yeah. I beg of you. Yes, I beg of you. These types of movies have intermissions built in, and it is customary that in theaters you leave and you take a break and you relax because a lot of these movies are super long. How long is this? So film? it's three hours long. So when the intermission comes up, I want you to actually take a break from the movie. I want you to get up. Go get a drink. Go use the bathroom. You can even turn on the movie, the, the rest of the movie, the next day. That's what I did. And I think it's a great place to stop and recharge your batteries before watching the rest of the movie. It is like watching two movies. That is such a weird request. But mm -hmm. OK, sir, it's your challenge. I'll do it the nice. way you want. Hell yeah. What, uh, uh, is there a specific snack I have to be eating? No, I you're watch? fine. <laughs> eat, eat your favorite okay. snack. That's all I ask. Well, I'm on Whole30, so I'll eat some grapes. Eat That's your favorite Whole30 snack. Uh, or a meat stick. A stick of meat. Yeah, That's you a, have to. When you're on oh, Whole30, you eat a lot of meat you sticks. You have to eat a meat stick. This, this okay. is the manliest movie I've ever seen in my life. So you have to do something very <laughs> manly during the movie. Okay, next week we'll be doing RRR. Is that how you say it? Just RRR? Yeah, R it R stands R R for okay. something. And I don't even want to tell you what it stands for because it's very funny. To... So watch okay. the whole thing. All right. The lead is a legend. And Fear God of Death is excited about the meat uh -huh. stick in the chat. Guys, if you want to join the chat to join the conversation, join us every Thursday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time at twitch.tv slash now try this cast. But... Without further ado, Marcus, what is black? I'm sorry. What is the black phone? That I'm glad you made that distinction because I kept searching for black phone and it gave me just pictures of black phones. And that was not what I was looking for. The black phone is a 2021 American coming of age supernatural horror film directed by Scott Derrickson, who's also directed films like The Exorcism Sinister. of Emily Rose. Sinister, which was an incredible movie, great horror movie. It. Maybe this month for Spooky Scary Boys Month, we will watch it. And Doctor Strange, the first Doctor mm -hmm. Strange. It was produced by Jason Blum and Blumhouse, and it's an adaptation. Oh, is, is it Blumhouse? Yeah. I always say Blumhouse. Well, it's. Am I, I always say I, I had this conversation recently where I was like, I always say Blumhouse, and I will yeah. always say Blumhouse. But that's wrong. But his name is Blum. In Honestly, kind of a baller move for your name to be Jason Blum and to call it Blumhouse. <laughs> in interviews, I've heard people so call it Blumhouse, but in my brain, it's Blumhouse. Yeah. OK. Anyway, so great. It, Marcus, it's an adaptation of the 2004 short story of the same name by Joe Hill, son of Stephen King. Ah, in a anthology series called 20th Century Ghosts. Mm. I, I, I meant to I meant to read that. that yes, I read I've read a comic book adaptation of another short story in that collection. Uh, the Was Cape. It? Oh, The Cape. There's like one called Nosferatu that he's written. I've read a few different. That's his book. That's a book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've read a few. Not in this short. Yeah, I just meant Joe Hill's works. Oh, sure. I've read a few of Joe Hill's works before, but it's never. I. It's yeah, never I. resonated with me. Sure. I wonder why. I, I would like to hear more discussion on why, because I always meant to read one of his books and mm -hmm. never did, except because I've read Lock and Key, which he wrote all of. And I think that's one of the best comics I've ever read. I love the conceit. Oh. I love the story, the family dynamics. I love like the way the twists and turns happen. Yeah. And I think I just love a good shtick and the shtick of there's an old house and then got these weird old keys and maybe there's aliens involved. It's cool. I liked it. I don't know. I, I liked it a lot. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. Lock and key was a, a, a fun ride for sure. And the TV series kind of ruined it. Did you watch that? Yeah. The first season, I almost finished the first season. And I was yeah. like, I can't even finish this. This isn't even good. Yeah, I know. It was it like, just took away it all the thing. um. it took away all the like just and whimsy. It took away all the whimsy, you know, and like mm. that book is like all like 
horror whimsy you know yeah, it's like yeah, yeah, suspense yeah. and tension with like it's like harry potter where there's like fucking cool ass keys and shit going on yeah, but it's yeah, like yeah. it lost that it lost the tension and the family dynamics are a little bit there because the actors are good but they're trying really hard i don't know what happened yeah and remember that was a adaptation that was the second time they tried adapting it because fox uh -huh. made one it got we never saw the pilot yeah, yeah it was going through like so basically bad. hell to be produced yeah. So and anything like that is just who knows yeah. how, how many people touched that those scripts a lot. I'm sure. Yeah, you know. And that's I feel like fault. short stories being adapted. I want to talk to you about that. It, this this is relevant of the black phone. We're talking about the black phone now. We're in it. We're here. Yeah. We're talking. Thanks for making sure everyone's on the same page. Everyone's I just I just meant sometimes good. people you know sometimes people are like oh you didn't talk about the episode. We're talking about it. This is us talking about it. I'm, we haven't gotten a review like that for like three years. I'm bitter. <laughs> I'm still mad at that one iTunes review. Oh, guys, go to iTunes. Leave us five star reviews. Mm -hmm. Tell Marcus that he's wrong and you love our banter. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So short stories being adapted into horror films. I feel like, well, horror films is the one that I know most about, but yeah. other films have been adapted. I think that it's a good idea in the right hands and it could definitely work. But I think with yeah. Stephen King's work, I think because of his name and status, a lot of people take his works and make mm. little baby stories into long things that are like super drawn out and like because they weren't they're were having to add extra stuff like a filler episode of an anime it just feels like why are we here yeah i and, think Stephen king's a great example because he's yeah. one of america's greatest writers yeah and one of those reasons is because of how much he's written yeah. and just because he's written so much does not mean he's they're all good exactly like he, he'll say it himself sometimes like yeah that story sucked yeah <laughs> and i felt a little bit of that in this film i felt like it felt like it was based on a short story where it was like this could have been a 45 minute episode of the twilight zone or something instead marcus if this was a 45 minute episode of the twilight zone this would be or like black mirror or something yeah this would be one of like the best episodes 100%. Of i've ever seen it would, it would have been so great as yeah. a movie half of it's garbage <laughs> <laughs> which is where my 45 minutes comes in from oh uh, that's so smart i i didn't marcus i was ready to come in here and fucking tear to shit half of this movie because i think we, we can all agree there's a lot of superfluous shit in there and not even superfluous it's like it's it's needed it's just done badly we'll all get it into like, it I, for I, sure because i agree with you 100 like, percent. yeah but like that's totally why and i didn't even i didn't think of that because mm -hmm. i didn't know it was a short story until you just said it yeah, yeah. and we went down this rabbit hole but that's exactly right. You know, you. Oh. <laughs> so, I, I, I'm I just, love when you're I had, so impressed I had a big with moment just I to said. tell you. <laughs> Sometimes you leave me speechless. I what can I say? It. It's a. You know, I'm a podcaster. My it's job great. is to talk. Sometimes, Marcus, you're just right. Wow. <laughs> I have nothing you. to add. <laughs> Thank you so much. I always have something to add, but I you're just right. My trophy. I accept right. my award. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. I'll find something to say about it. I'm sure. Yes. So the movie starts off. You want to start us off? i guess not <laughs> yeah no i can't i just before we even get to like the synopsis and what's going on in this sure. movie like i just want it to be known like i there's a lot of horror movies and i like horror movies you know i do like when we watch no. a good horror movie i'm mm -hmm. like i can't you hate horror you. I movies can't. Hate i don't them. i fucking you marcus you know when you put a good horror movie in front of me <laughs> i fucking like i am in it i love uh -huh. a good tension filled yeah horror rock i love that you have to convince people that you like horror movies <laughs> as if there are not hundreds of hours of recorded content <laughs> of, us them to shit? of us watching and talking about horror movies <laughs> well sometimes i'm a little harsh but i think true, i'm a little true, harsh true, true, true. because i i don't i don't love horror okay i like the genre and i've lo i love movies in the genre i don't think the genre is without its flaws and because of that a lot of the tropes don't work for me as opposed to like anime where it's just like you put a couple fucking tropey things and put some robots and a super saiyan guy i'm like this is great i'll watch this yeah shit. Yeah, yeah you know as opposed to horror where i'm like i don't want to watch this i had no interest in watching this movie i mm -hmm. thought it looked like another horror movie <laughs> <It's just> like, <laughs> like nothing about it stood out to me in a okay. significant way yeah. like it was another guy in a mask it was mm -hmm. another kid being like you know and yeah, for sure. I, I just wanted that to be known. I had no interest in this movie. <laughs> no, I totally understand that, right? Like, yeah. for me, we've had this conversation sort of before on the podcast where, like, you 
I think everyone on the planet Earth has something that they're will that they like enough to overlook flaws in, right? Like yeah. you like rom coms and anime enough to be like, this is tropey and stupid, but I like it and I'll look past the flaws. For me, that's horror. For yeah. me, horror, a lot of times, like something will be bad. I know it's bad. And objectively, I'm just like, I cannot justify this movie to you, but I still enjoy it because it's something that I like anyway. Like, that's yeah. totally okay. But for you, this horror isn't it. And that's the only thing that I feel like when we talk about horror things kind of separates us. But a lot of times I feel like we still end up having similar opinions anyway. I think we're going to have similar opinions mm-hmm. completely. I just, I think the difference is you would have watched this movie and I wouldn't have. A hundred percent. This, was, me, this you know? movie was on my radar and I was going to watch it already. Of course. It's a, it's a brand new it. horror movie by a well-known exactly. director mm-hmm. with a, with a A-list name as the lead yeah. bad guy. Totally. Sinister so, is one of those movies that I always say scared me. I'm like, it is, it is one of the few movies that I after watching it alone, I was like, holy shit, I do not feel comfortable sleeping by myself tonight. Like, it is I've never good. Seen, I don't even know what it's about. Don't, don't even tell me. I guess challenge I me. I, have no, I know nothing about Sinister. Mm-hmm. I thought Sinister was a James Gunn movie for a long time, but that's Slither. That is Slither. I was like, what are you and talking I don't know, about? And I don't know the difference between Slither and Sinister. One in is head. about slimy little worms, and the other is about video tapes, Don't tell me. old videotapes. And I won't tell you which one's oh. which, Nick. Well, now I know because I thought they were both about a slimy worm. <laughs> 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 so Black Phone starts out. Gosh, it's so easy to talk about the first like fucking half hour of this film in like three sentences. Because you so like the first oh, fucking. Honestly, it's easy to talk about the whole movie in like two sentences. It it's is like uh, what? they abduct they abduct this guy abducts kids and he du- uh, abducts our lead and then he gets away. Yeah, hundred percent. We did you did it. Good episode of the Twilight Zone. I love it. So the beginning of the movie, we are oh gosh, I don't even know. So it's it's coming of age story is like it, I feel like it's something that I hold precious in the like I feel mm. like it needs to be a mm-hmm. good movie to justify that moniker and i don't think it's really t- like just because you have a kids and they're growing up doesn't mean it's a coming of age like, Did like nothing about up? this movie no it's, he was, it was he like the span of a week <laughs> no yeah, it, yeah there was a trauma he has trauma now he's devastated and ruined for life we have all to of talk them are about, oh god there's so but much stuff but, I but it's not coming about. of age. coming of age is like the wonder years yeah, yeah yeah coming of age is like that 17 movie with edge of 17 with mm-hmm. like Haley stein yeah, yeah yeah it's yeah. like fucking what the four what are the four boys it that is, walk it across is the four boys? What are the four boys that walk across a, a, a train track? Stand fucking, by me. That's a fucking coming of age. Pivotal story. Like, Goonies. Pivotal moments Goonies. in kids' lives that change them forever. Coming of age. I guess coming of age means positive in my mind. But it does have a positive <laughs> connotation. <laughs> that is like a Jamster dude. He got to understand <laughs> his bully. No, he didn't. He fucking <laughs> he killed a man. Now he's a fucking murderer. That's true. He's a fucking. That's fucking true. Okay, I, I want to get this out of the way. I have to talk about go the ahead, growth too, because that is it is the final scene of the movie. So I don't want to talk yeah. about it right now. But it is Again, the thing whatever. that single handedly upset me the most. Really, in all of the movie, the ending scene is like one of the most upsetting things I've ever not, seen. Not ju- you're not talking about him like standing outside in the pl- place where I skin. You're talking about the whole final exchange? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The whole final exchange okay. between the family and that whole thing. Between the family? I'll, oh, you know no, what? But, I'll just talk about not, it now. Not the murderer. Not the murderer. Not the murderer. After that. Not af- you're talking after, after that. the murderer. Yeah, 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 after the murderer. Oh, okay. Sure, yeah. we can talk about that. I'll talk about it if you want. Whatever. Okay, go ahead. Let's talk about it. Sure. Let's, let's we so, do this however so, we want. So main, up. yeah, F- Finney, Finney gets, kills his killer. He gets out of the house. Okay. And there is everybody. Sure. So a whole part of this movie is that the main character, Finney, is someone who has experienced, he's experiencing abuse at home. He's experiencing abuse at school. He's being bullied at home. He's being bullied at school. And he can't yeah. escape that. He ends up being kidnapped. And a whole, the whole sort of like point of the movie is that he learns to overcome his like weakness of like letting people 
abuse him like it's just i don't understand that Let, let's just like that's also problematic you right but let's not over we'll get back to that, that. We'll get to that. Yeah, i think you you thought it would be not as bad and then you Say, said the I words out loud you're like no, wow, no, 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 that's no. really yeah, 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 that's yeah. Really, i was like no i know it would be bad but i don't want to talk about that right now i want to talk about something else but in that yeah. sort of like with that problem that we've established in the film right mm -hmm. even if that's like let's pretend it's not a problematic message right let but sure. even with that at the end of the film he grows and is stronger right as a person for having been kidnapped not a great message to be sending at the end his dad comes who we've sh been shown at this point is abusive and is a bad person mm -hmm. and his dad's like i'm so sorry and the boy's just like doesn't say anything and that upset me so much because you have this entire film about this boy's growth as a person and becoming tough and you don't have him say to his dad something his along the abuser. lines his primary abuser like if you ever touch me again i'm gonna do to you what i did to him or something along those oh, lines which would have been like oh fuck to show that Things have changed for him and are going to change as a coming of age story does. You are forever changed by the experience. There is no evidence that he was forever changed by the experience. He goes to school and everyone's like, whoa, that guy killed the dude. And he's like, yeah, I did. And then that's it. And you're like, oh, yeah. what the hell? There was nothing at the end telling us that he was changed or even even the cops come or he and he tells them that the dad's abusive and they take the dad away. Some kind of some kind of like ending that makes it so that the kids aren't just going back to an abusive home. The dad apologized, but people who are abusive yeah. apologize all the time and they just continue to do that. Like, yeah, I feel like we have a problem with abuse in cinema because all you're describing to me is making me remember the end of Split, where I feel like there's enough parallels between this movie mm. and Split to talk about. Sure. Because I think while they're very, very different movies, I think there are some some scenarios that exist in the two that I, yeah. I like way better in Split than I like in this movie. But I hated Split ending, also for I, the similar reason. Yeah. But but the re thing that I, th I think about Split that really makes it fall apart is the ending, which is she mm -hmm. is stronger because she was abused like yeah. she is different and she is better because she's better off having been abused is yeah like which is a weird the, message like, to she send. survives because she was abused and i think what they're trying if i'm giving them the benefit of the doubt <laughs> i feel like what they're trying to say is even though abuse has happened in your life it doesn't make you less than it doesn't make you weak it doesn't mean you deserve like i yeah. feel like there's some kind of message thing yeah, yeah in there it makes that you stronger trying. as a person sure no that's not that's I that's, that's what, what it comes out saying. as <laughs> I, I don't th I, but I, I think but it, it, I, th I think that's tone deafness. Not in, yeah, yeah. I don't think that's their intention because that's stupid. I don't think they're stupid. I think they're just unintentional and tone deaf. Yeah. Like I don't think they're. I don't think M Night and Scott Derrickson are like. Oh, yeah. Man. But even if that I wish was, I was. I wish I was abused yeah. as a kid because man, I'd be. I'd be fucking dope. <laughs> but even I'd that, be so dope. Even that is like show that the kid is stronger for it at the end of the movie. Have him stand up to his father. Give us that scene. Yep, if you're showing his true. father as an abuser and you're showing the fact that this kid is being abused his whole life and he uses this like instance of him being kidnapped to really like I want to stand up for himself. Have him continue that throughout all of the ending, you know, yeah. have him confront his bullies, have him confront his father, have those storylines closed up. It was just weird. Yep, I, I, I completely agree with you. And because now you're talking about it, I think it's really easy to talk about the beginning and intro to this movie where basically we meet Finney and Gwen and their brother and sister combo. You meet a little bit of the dynamics with like the bully and the kids in mm -hmm. school. And then you find out that the dad is verbally and physically abusive. And you also find out Gwen has visions. And then you also find out there's a grabber and he's grabbing kids. And then Finney yeah. gets grabbed. And then I would say half of the movie is Finney is being is abducted. Mm -hmm. And I think there might be an argument to be had about where this comes from. But my take was their mother was psychic and passed on her abilities to her son and her daughter. Yeah, but they that's just what manifest differently. Yeah. yeah so uh, Finney is able to talk on this phone in the room to all the past people that have been grabbed and Gwen has visions and the movie is them on the journey of using both of those powers to escape the grabber mm -hmm. and then yep. 
that's the movie. That is, but the, I don't, you did but, it. We're done. Episode. Have a good night, guys. Here's, here's what I don't get. Here's what I don't get. I don't. Here's what I don't get. I'm sure the short story. I'm sure what they're talking about having to add stuff because he. It even says it like, oh, he had to add stuff, obviously, because it was obviously, a short story. Yeah. I I didn't read it, but I'm pretty. I feel. I feel. I feel safe to say mm-hmm. that probably the story st- starts either really soon or right when he gets abducted, right? Because <laughs> I think. Because I think the half of the first half of this movie, half the first half, half of, this of the movie, movie, almost half. It was it was a little less, yeah. but almost half of this movie is him going to school, him wanting to talk to the girl yeah. to dissect the frog with him, him getting beat up by the bully, him making friends with another bully, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> who yeah. beats up other bullies. Hell yeah, that's who you got to make uh, friends with. Jesus Christ, the bully uh, like of the Gwen, bulliers, and Gwen being weird and the abusive. Fo- I don't. I'm not mad that that's in the movie. Like, no, I think the, for sure the, the conceit, the thought of okay, to make this abduction hit harder and make you care because honestly, in horror movies, a lot of the time you don't care. That's a big problem, yeah. right? Like, yeah, yeah. it gets right to the like this killer is killing these people, and I'm like, I don't give a shit about these. People. Yeah, yeah, you're rooting <laughs> for the killer so, at a certain point. Yeah, uh, yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the Halloween movies, that was a big problem at the like the begin the, the some of the those movies. I'm yeah, just yeah. like, I'm fucking room for Michael Myers over here. The problem isn't that they were there. The problem is how like untactful it felt like a lot of it oh, was. Like, yeah, man. There, Ooh, there's a little bit that. that I like. There's like a little bit that I liked. And I th- and I think everything I liked was because of the actors. Like I liked the kid mm-hmm. who beat up the bully. Same. I like Finney and Gwen. Same. Gwen's fantastic. Yep. She's going to be a star. Sure. Finney. I wasn't sure about, but as the movie went on, I was mm-hmm. like, you know what? I, I really him. like what Finney's He's doing. Rummy. I really fucking yeah. like him. You know, even the dad who's just like overly no. like the kid makes a noise. And uh, I was like, you know what? You're not doing a bad I disagree job. On you that know what? One. Oh, OK, that's uh, that's the, I'll let you finish. But that is I want to get back to the dad specifically. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. But the, the cops, they're not like bumbling idiots. Mm-hmm. They yeah. seem like fine. Like nothing about that seems wrong. But Marcus, why for 30, 40 minutes of this film was I just like turn Turning to Lexi and saying, this is a bad movie. <laughs> I like, uh, here's why. Here's why. Okay. I think maybe this was a COVID film. Maybe there was things going on. Script change. I, I don't know. It's hard to make a movie. They did it. It's impressive. Yeah. There's a scene. There's a scene. And this like there's two. There's two moments where I'm a little bit in the film industry. Sure. Not really, but a little bit. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But 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 I'm pretty good at like taking away being a film person but sometimes i'm like i see the seams and there were okay. two moments where this happened that i thought were just bad filmmaking uh, i wonder I like if they're the same two that i think uh, for me i feel like you could hear me know. turn to you in the theater and saying why the fuck do you do that yeah, yeah. Where one of them is finney right before he gets grabbed <gasps> is the- walking down up walking down a path Yes. And yes, and yes, it's, it's a you could you could either do one of two things. You could take 15 seconds and have him walking down the path while everyone goes away to see that he's alone, or you make the path smaller and just be on the shot shorter and have him be all alone on a path for five seconds. Uh-huh. What Scott Derrickson decided to do was have him start the path with a couple people fade to th- four or five seconds later with a little less people and then fade five. Se- and the problem isn't the fading. The problem isn't this conception of cinema. The problem is this isn't a conception you made yeah. in your movie. No. This conception is something you have to do again and again uh-huh. and again and establish it uh-huh. as like a way of filmmaking. But it was like in the editing bay is probably where it happened. But in the editing, they'd be like, man, we got to shave 15 seconds <laughs> off of this film. This walk isn't a porn. Let's just fade a couple. What is that? It was. What is that? It was so jarring. I have the exact same problem. I was going to bring it up to you yeah. because this this and there's one other scene too that I think it's probably the same one. Maybe that, maybe that something that. similar happens where it's just like, like it is jarring. You're not supposed to notice edis- editing transitions in that way. And there's nothing like you said establishing this as an artistic. It like could be an artwork film. Sure, 100%. But if you're not an Artur film, you can't have Artur moments. You can't do it one time for five seconds. Like, what are you talking about? It was just a very strange transition that took me out of the movie. And I was like, why was that in there? And it was such an important moment because that's when he gets grabbed. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, It was so weird. Just show him walking and then get grabbed. Like, this movie could have taken out all of that shit. Yeah. That being said, I like the grab. The grab was good. Guy was with groceries. Yeah. And he was like, you got black balloons? Boom, 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 boom. And I was like, that's how it should be. That's Uh how it would happen. I like that. I like that was scary. That was legitimately a little scary. Yeah. The other moment for me was when Gwen found out he got grabbed. 
and she left her friend's that was it. sleepover. Same moment. Same moment. Same moment. And and it did the thing where she's running in place with the camera with her face going. Yeah. Why did they do that? Why? I didn't make no sense as a transition. It was so I'm jarring. Cool. It was so I'm jarring. So glad you agree. Those two. Yeah. I wanted to cut them from the film somehow and like show them on the yeah. podcast because I am such disbelief that that was a part of the rest of the movie. Because for the rest of the movie, there's no other cuts like that. There's no. nothing else. It's it was just a the very two normal cuts. film. And you and I both separately noticed the same two scenes. It's not like, yeah. oh, it's this one. Oh, this one. It was just the same two scenes. Only two scenes like yeah. that in the whole movie. I would say the rest of the movie felt pretty cohesive. I didn't love the film style. I thought it lended itself to a moment or two that was really nice. Some nice shots. Yeah. But I think that the style of film that they made made it slower paced and it needed to be faster paced. Yeah. I thought it felt like an older movie. It was trying to be like Halloween. Mm-hmm. Or an episode of the Wonder Years, I can't even tell. Like, just like I, I I'm not, an, yeah. are, I'm not a cinephile enough to really know what th- was happening. I get that, but but I thought, oh, hold on, I unplugged my phones. I'm gonna keep talking, but I can't hear you. So, uh, so <laughs> okay, I think that <laughs> not doing a good job. I, that jamster dude asked, "What do you think of the twist that their mother were, was also psychic?" That wasn't a twist. <laughs> That was it a twist? That was just like a fucking in the movie. (laughs) It was just fucking in the movie. I think that I wish it was better done. Like I don't mind it. I actually think it. You know what I liked about it? You know what I I was gonna say about the the psychic thing is that I think that the two moments where they tried being artsy and having like a take and a say. It's weird because there's multiple dream sequences. Like that's the moment where you really do something artsy fartsy and interesting and and weird and like a- abstract. They didn't do yeah. that. They were just like, "Oh, it's a dream. She's running. She sees the house." Yeah. I guess there was a moment or two of that with the with the ghosts in the black phone, but those felt fine because yeah. it was fucking ghosts exactly yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> he's talking to ghosts uh I, the thing that i did like about it is i did like that it seemed like it didn't it wasn't affecting finney and it was just a gwen thing yeah. and then you find out finney had the same power but different i yeah, like yeah. that that was I did cool. like that i like that a that lot seems like an x-men thing like if the x-men parent was this and the two kids mm. have the same power but just a little different yeah like that felt like an that felt like a comic book thing yeah. <laughs> i like that no that's true I, I did like that a lot i like that finn also kind of like his powers manifested in the specific way under stress which makes yeah. sense it feels x Men. y 100 you yeah. know but i think the i don't know i think the the mom thing just felt so like it tried to use it as a justification for why he was an abuser too like it was like well the mom was yeah. crazy so the, that's why the father beats the yeah. kids they kept trying to justify that it's like oh he's an alcoholic all oh, this all that like it's not okay he's just, an asshole, guys. He's just a bad person he's abusing his he's kids just a bad person and he's it's funny too okay let's talk about the actor since we're kind of like on that anyway but sure. i did okay this is gonna be a very fucked up thing that i say okay as someone who's experienced abuse and a lot of it, I am oftentimes triggered by movies like this and scenes like this in movies. But this one was done so poorly that it had absolutely no effect on me. And I was laughing at it because it was just so awkward to watch. And it didn't feel real like real abuse in any way that even much worse movies with lower budgets have managed to capture. You know, it is wild to me that they fucked that up. And I kind of blame the dad actor for that. Maybe. And I, maybe it's just the script. Maybe the director could have also stepped in and really like tried to get more out of him for those scenes or something like that. But it just like the dad felt like, I don't know, just like a, I don't know, just like he felt like he was in a different movie than everybody else. And especially sure. after you introduce, like, especially with the kids doing such a great job acting, it's like it's jarring when the adult in the scene is sort of like the worst actor. That is that is funny. I the I also didn't like the abuse in Malignant. Remember when we watched that? There was the domestic abuse at the beginning of the film. Yes, that also felt like comical too. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Also felt comical. 
it's weird. I, I just don't know. I don't know. I, I, I don't mind abuse being in films. I don't I, I think that it's something we should see sure. and talk about and like be a reason because that's a mm-hmm. real trauma in a lot of people's lives and you should use it 100%. in films. But it always feels like it's like um like more of a uh like a, a deus ex machina or it yeah. feels like it's like a yeah people like, use like it as a reason for things I, I, I there's a better word for it but like yeah it's like a get justification it. yeah. it's just like a it's not like a part of it's like the reason why and it's like yeah. no, no like it's not i don't know this is what it felt to me but i yeah. agree with you it wasn't it wasn't the, the yeah. best scene i uh, I, I thought the kids acted it okay here's an, I, I hear you okay another thing that kind of upset me about this movie is i just watched a movie called i see you which is like the super kind of like direct to streaming movie that it wasn't the best movie ever but it did the thriller part of the horror much better than this film is it the guy with the weird monkey mask yeah well it's a frog but yeah yeah there's it looks it's like a, a monkey frog. mask yeah yeah so basically that movie, I don't want to spoil it for anybody, but there's a killer going around. You don't know who the killer is. And there's like some twists and turns. And it's it's a very fun movie. And I think it does the amount of twists well. It handles everything well. It's not the best movie in the world, but it is a fun like afternoon watch if you're trying to watch like a thriller movie on a Saturday afternoon or something. But it was just disappointing to see this movie, which had better like actors in it, had better, more money, like everything. do a worse job overall of suspense and a lot of it comes down to the director and a lot of it comes down to the script Mm -hmm. and i don't know which which it was that i didn't like in this and i feel like it was both yeah but but that being said i I do want to talk about a couple positives that i like just to get in we'll we'll talk about everything but yeah no one more negative thing i just don't know why (laughs) i don't know why like there's all this good stuff here like the premise of having this stuff here but it's just done so not interestingly i don't know yeah i I, I love that you were like let's guys we need to stop shooting on smooth let's talk about positives hold on though <laughs> i love that well there's you know what you know why it's frustrating because there's bones in this movie that 100%. Are it's because it the was kids? based on a good short story and they had to add more content and everything they added sucks but the, but that's the, but that's my problem the the idea of what they added mm-hmm. isn't bad i like the bully i like the school yeah. i like the kids interacting in the world i like the fact that the cops went to the girl who was having I- uh, images and then found out she was like, I like that. That and was cool. That like, was a good we gotta, scene. We trust this girl. We're going to keep going to her. <laughs> I love that. I love the cops and the girl interaction. <laughs> okay. And honestly, I sh- I know I'm, I don't feel like I'm supposed to have liked Max, the brother that the cops mm. went to. But I liked, I liked him. It. It I liked was him. Dumb. It was I so dumb. That was a nice moment of levity. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if I like the twist with him, but that was a nice moment of levity. But some good things. Is I thought at first when he got grabbed and he was du- you hated the cops. You're wrong, that jam suit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they were dumb. They were dumb cops. I could see how people. But hate they them. were like normal dumb. Yeah, yeah. They yeah, weren't yeah. like befuddled. They were like real cops. They weren't like they weren't like tripping over their own legs. Like ooh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like cops usually are in movies. Like yeah. a malignant man. Those cops were bad. <laughs> those were funny cops though. <laughs> They were. It wasn't supposed to be funny. Marcus. It was. That whole movie was a comedy. I don't. I think it was. was it? That was why was you liked comedy. it. And I, I did loved it. it. So I think it started slow because I think the pacing of this movie was slow anyway. When he first got grabbed and he's in the in the basement, I think I've seen this done better in a couple things like mm-hmm. um, uh, Ten Cloverfield Lane did this yeah. a little bit. Tons that of movies do this all the time, and I, and I think they. But I think eventually they find a stride Mm -hmm. i think there's a stride with the phone calls the kids and their stories yeah 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 and i think the payoff for a lot of the little things are pretty good 100 like i liked i liked that he was trusting that like when he had to go and take the rope that the one kid hid and go try to open the window i found that compelling i liked when he had to start When he had to start digging because the one kid said, I started to dig, but I didn't have enough mm-hmm. time. I thought that was compelling. When Same. the one kid was like, you got to break through the wall of this one spot. Yeah. And then he couldn't get out. And I thought I was like, shit, he still can't get out. Yeah. That's compelling. And then the way it all pieced together, I think was pretty good. I feel like it could have yeah. been a little better. Yeah, yeah. I feel like one or more two little things of like jigsaw pieces falling uh-huh. into place needed to sure. happen. Like, like saw. 
Like I think at the end of Saw, the way all those jigsaw p- pieces, pun intended, yeah, yeah. all fell together to get those last uh-huh. moments of Saw, like are special to me. I think that's great. Yeah, I yeah. think it was missing a little bit, but I thought it was compelling. I liked him in the basement. I liked yes. the phone calls. And that's what the movie is, right? I, I agree. I like all of the basement stuff. I like the phone calls. I the the for me, the basement was where the movie started being good and then it kind of yeah. even after they left the basement i was like the movie got bad again but i think even in the basement ethan hawk really sold all of it for me but there yeah. could have been more it felt like yeah. this is what i was i don't know if this makes sense as an analogy this might be a bad analogy it felt like watching someone play a video game with the guide with the strategy guide where you're like skipping content that you could have seen if you messed up and got in certain scenes, got in other endings or whatever. So it felt like he was sort of speed running being kidnapped in a yeah. way that I felt like you're missing a lot more interactions with Ethan Hawke that I feel like if he didn't have these cheat codes, he would have had, and I think would have made a slightly more compelling movie. He should have made mistakes that the kids helped yes. him fix instead of yes. the kids helping him not make a single mistake. Yes. So like the one time mm. he mis- makes a mistake is that he goes up, he unlocks the thing, but then the dog barks and then he's captured again. But even yeah. that wasn't like that was a tense scene. But even the, the interaction with him and Ethan Hawke wasn't that like bad. Like Ethan Hawke wasn't really that. He was a bad guy and he kidnapped the kid, but he didn't really do anything to him. It's weird. I think I feel two things I want to comment about. Uh-huh. First off, I'll ta- tell you what I th- I feel like the movie didn't want to go there. Yeah, it implied yeah. sexual things was happening. It implied mm-hmm. abuse was happening. It implied crazy shit was happening, but it didn't want to touch it with a 10 foot pole. No, it, it fe- was. It wanted to be yeah. very PG-13. It yes. wanted. To, I don't know if it was rated R, but it wanted to be very PG-13. Yes. It wanted to be PC. Mm-hmm. It didn't want to do which. It's hard because I also don't want to see sure, that sure, sure. at all. Yeah. But but also, do I even want the tension for that? I don't know. Yeah. I, I feel don't know. like I would have liked. I don't think he I don't think he has to be like a child toucher. Right. I think yeah. he could have. I think he come, was. I think so, too. But he could have come okay. down with like a knife and be, and like intimidated him like pretend yeah. these are two adults right like let's take yeah, the kid 100%. thing out of it pretend these are two adults if you're if you're watching a movie where someone's being kidnapped even 10 cloverfield lane where it kind of ended up being fine like there was a lot of tension in that movie she was trying to escape it got scary he would come down yeah. she almost got caught there was like well, a it lot never of, stopped in that movie yeah that's true there was a lot of tension in that movie and yeah. this movie i feel like lacked that it was like i think you're right he kept yeah. almost getting caught and then the phone would ring and he would be fine he was fine i think that this movie and again i'll bring up split i i don't think it's a perfect movie but i think that's an entertaining mm-hmm. movie i like yeah. the movie i think that sure. m night Shyamalan crafted a good tense film throughout and it had interesting twists and turns he, this movie should have done what that movie did where the whole movie was in the basement like you they could have started this movie in the basement with a different and kid? had time to do all that oh. no with the same kid oh the same kid we liked a half an hour 45 minutes of this movie and it was the kid in the in the basement yeah and everything you're saying i think is completely correct i think they just needed 45 more minutes in the basement like the stuff that we got before he went to the basement yeah didn't do what i wanted it to do and i was arguing that maybe mm-hmm. it just needed to do it better yeah but i think your argument's right i think they should have just been in the bait like you still could have the sister <laughs> you could have had a couple flashbacks like one of the, bo- the guy that beat up you're right if they did it through like flashbacks, that scene, they could have done it yeah and you could have spent less time right the movie felt like it needed to like take its time to mm-hmm. get to these scenes co- carefully yeah. and closely and like have him walking to this place yeah, and yeah, going yeah. to i didn't want any of that they were trying to make the movie and it was like an hour and a half long movie they were really trying to make it that long yeah like the kid that beat up his bully when he called him on the phone we get a flashback to him beating up his bully yeah. and then that was it yeah, yeah and they yeah. could have been five minutes part yeah. it's, and and there could have been all those twists and turns. yeah it, it's it's totally yeah. like it should have they didn't want it to be a bottle movie mm-hmm. but it should have been i this movie could have been one location i maybe like don't obviously 100% they go agree to with other that. oh i i don't think because so i think I that's like, what i wanted i feel like i liked the school stuff 
I didn't did really you? like the home stuff. What in the school did you like? Almost I, cutting open a frog? It, it just fe- it didn't feel like a long part of the movie. Like it felt it could have been shorter. It could have been shorter. But like I liked some of the school stuff where it's like, okay, we are establishing Finny as yeah. a likable character not one that, that we could just be feel like 10 bad minutes. for you're right 10 minutes that's where i agree with you 100 percent. i, I don't think that in 10 I, you minutes can, you can have your 10 minutes in the Give movie me 10 minutes. I, i'm not saying you have to start with the grab i'm saying though that the majority of this movie should have been half post grab and it wasn't it yeah. was half yeah half well, was too little if you but then again right where did they fuck up the movie the most i liked the the basement scenes but they were missing tension they could have had more tension in the same amount of time that we had in the basement that they just didn't use well enough maybe maybe i don't know i think i just i love bottle maybe i just love that genre i love Fair. saw i love 10 cloverfield lane mm-hmm. i love split i love when you like get the whole thing to don't breathe yeah don't i breathe think don't breathe great. is a great example of like yeah. it all they spend 10 minutes at the beginning and then it's all in yeah. the house yeah and like there's all these things that you can set up with like putting this here putting that there mm-hmm. it all paying off yeah that i think are just beautiful when it's written correctly 100 and i think that's what this movie should have been yes but it wasn't i it wasn't i i agree with parts of that for sure yeah because <laughs> well you can be partly right that's totally fine fuck you <laughs> 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 Ethan Hawke was so good and I don't think we got enough of him. I agree. He was interesting. I liked I liked the look of the mask. I love that it was two tiered. Yeah. I oh, wish I, I love the mask. Let's talk about the mask. I wish there was more of it so I could have understand yeah. the psychology, mm-hmm. the ritual. Yeah. Like, I assume that stuff was there because I've seen horror movies and I'm sure. a person that has, can watch things. Yeah. But none of that was in the movie. No. I wish there was a little like no. the why yeah. of it like yeah. trickled in. I right? don't yeah, I don't necessarily think i needed the why like i don't want to see like oh he was also abused or whatever like i don't need that stuff but i just want like an inkling i want to know more about him in some capacity like what is he getting from this because he i feel like in horror movies a lot of times we get that at least Mm, we get what are they getting from it and we weren't told what that was and i the mask though right the mask was so cool it had a top part and it had a bottom part and the bottom part was magnetic, but you could also just wear the bottom part alone. I guess maybe not magnetic. It could have been like fucking Velcro. But it was cool. It came out. You can switch the different mask pieces. Can I be honest? I didn't realize that. So you just said that I'm looking at pictures. I, I love it. Never, I never occurred it to me that there was different bottoms. There fucking are. cool. Yeah. And he could wear the bottom and just and not the top and the whatever. I love that. Like yeah. we as horror fans. I feel like not all the time we get good, cool, new killers or like antagonists in horror films. But I thought this was very cool. I thought the mask was super cool and I liked it a lot. Agreed. Oh, Lexi said she needed a a why because it didn't make any sense. He freaked out when he took it off. Yeah, I I think it's just we accept that that because like Michael, well, Michael Myers, Jason, when you take off their mask, they freak out for a second. That's just a trope. Yeah, it's like it's their identity. Right. But there's also stuff where it's like, I don't think there was enough twists in this movie because I kept expecting there to be something else. And there wasn't. And it was just a else. flat movie the whole time. And you're like waiting for something. The tension. You're, you're like, there's so much stuff in the film that is like, yeah. okay, what's going to happen next? Oh, he just escapes. His plan works perfectly and he escapes. It. What the hell? Yeah. That was I crazy. think Don't Breathe is a great example of something that doesn't do that. There's a yeah. lot of mistakes, a lot of twists, a lot of turns. And you like you find out that the bad guy isn't it isn't the bad guy. And then you find yeah. out he is the bad guy. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. that's like See, none of that happened yeah. here. When, when just, there was some, just a kidnapper. There was a line when Ethan Hawke says, I'm not the one who killed those boys. And I thought oh, that was yeah. one of the most interesting lines yeah. in the film where I was like, what does that mean? Does he have like a split personality thing going on? Are the different masks different personalities? When he put on a Is mask, really he could have been like, he could have been like, now I am this person. Now I'm this person. Like, have different like split kind of, you know? Yeah. Um, or he, or 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 he was killing for his brother or something. Like that's else? what like, I was thinking. It was more the whole you know, movie when there. they introduced Max and he was like being like, oh, I think the killer's here. I've been like tracing and I came over. I was like. Oh, that'd be really interesting if when he comes down, the boy's like, please help me. And then you see the look of horror on his face when you realize that Max is the one who actually kills the boys. 
and Ethan Hawke oh, is and just he for, the grabber. And then he forgets about or, or something, yeah, yeah, something weird like that. Or he was just playing something. coy with the cops. Like he was all an act to be like. There was there wasn't a single them off twist. Tail. Was there? There was not a single twist in the movie. Except that he opened up the freezer for meat for the dog. That was like the extent yeah. of a twist that we got, it's which just, was cool. I like yeah. that, but that's not a twist. It's called. It's labeled as a horror thriller, and the movie was not thrilling. There needs to be some kind of twist or something. In the movie. I, I think the fact that you don't know if he's going to get this child will die and the child doesn't die, I guess, is even kill the child for them. Kill the child. Have the sister get kidnapped next. And then she's like, I mean, it seemed like he was only kidnapping boys, but have the sister get kidnapped next. And then she has to be like, she escapes because she gets help from her brother and all the steps that he made so far in the film. I don't fucking you know, know. You know what scene that I shouldn't have liked that I did like? The flashback for the phone for when the guy that the guy that phone that was from like Stranger Things, you like that? long hair and the pinball. Mitt. It was so I don't know. I liked it. It was so dumb. It was like we went we followed this whole kid for like five minutes yeah, playing did pinball, we do that? That beating someone's ass. And then just to was just to establish he was a badass. <laughs> like it was I did the only like reason too. and i liked it and then I, when he came back uh, and he was like i'm gonna beat him beat him and Finny, and he's like fuck you Finny. this is for you this yeah. is fucking for me and i was like i like angry yeah. ghost i like this yeah. guy that's a that was different i, I like, like that all the kids were the same and that way was that different i was like this is cool. then yeah why are there so many choices of like one thing and yeah. then not doing it consistently through the rest of the fucking film Oh, it would have been interesting to be like, have these moments with the ghosts and then the ghosts get to like pass on after they give him the information or something. Yeah. Or do it and like, I did like other horror movies have done, right? Like where. Like what? Oh, maybe they did. I don't remember. Maybe they did have the scene. But like the ghosts come and they take him or they kill him or whatever, you know? Oh, uh, they were. They talked to him on the phone. Remember? Oh, like yeah. He he was, when he was the dying, phone. they talked to him. Yeah. And he puts him on the phone. Uh, but uh, which was nice. It was OK. Sure. I, I also liked when the bully, the, the the bully of the bullies, his friend taught him how to like jump back, jump forward, jump back, hit mm -hmm. like there was something compelling about watching Finney, like trying to be strong in this moment yeah. to do it and listening to his friend coach him through it. And yeah. the shot of him ghost and him doing it. Was compelling. It, like that was good. There's some yeah. cool things. And I think for the sure we're cool. And the phone was cool. And the. But like, why did I love this movie? Like, it feels such like a waste, <laughs> like yeah. a good cons cons I cons feel cons like half cons of them. It's because 45 minutes of this movie were great. I think they were yeah. legitimately great. And I think that it would have if it was just 45 minutes long with those that time of stuff that I liked, it would have been a, a 10 out of 10 or a 9 out of 10, 90 percent. I would have agreed. But it had so much extra content that felt like it was superfluous. Yeah. And we didn't read the short story, so we could also be backwards. Like maybe all the stuff, stuff added that was great. Was the stuff that we liked? Yeah, yeah maybe it was just who, who the knows? home abuse. Probably thing. not though, because the the short story had to be about ghost calling a kidnap kid, right? <laughs> like that's so, what the yeah. that's what the show. Like if that's not in the movie, the movie is just about like a kid that gets beat up a lot. It's like Lawnmower Man. I don't know. Lawnmower Man is a short story written by Stephen King. Oh, about... that's the guy that goes to the internet. No, thing, right? No, the oh. short story. Yes, but no. The short so that's the problem the short story is about like a guy who's mentally ill who mows lawns and like ends up accidentally murdering somebody or something i don't remember but it has oh, nothing okay. to do with the internet and the movie is all about someone going into the internet and a, a murderer in the internet who's digital and comes and kill and it's nothing nothing like the short story but because they wanted to use stephen king's name to sell a horror movie they said based on lawnmower <laughs> Honestly, they got a sequel, so who's mad? And the, and, and the video game. And the video game. And the video game. I do want you to know that there is a potential sequel, because in June 2022, Derrickson said Hill had pitched him a wonderful idea for a sequel that he would do if the first film was successful. Hmm. I think this is successful. I think I like Gwen and Finney. I like their powers. It's well so received like by critics. It's grossed $150 million so far. I'm sure it didn't cost that to make it, right? It cost 16 to 18 million. Yeah. That's yeah. a success. That's a huge I, success. I, I, it sucks because I liked Ethan Hawke, but I, I really liked Finney and Gwen. Yeah. Uh, actor's name. I clicked I kicked too many pictures of the mask. Mason Thames as Finney and Madeline McGraw as Gwen. 
I thought yeah. they were great. If you had to pitch a sequel, what would it be? Well, it would have to be about them and their powers. Okay. It would have... Um, you can't do kidnapping. Like, they're going to do kidnapping again, but you can't sure. do kidnapping again or else it's a bad film. Sure. So it must... Here's what you... <laughs> Okay. Here's what you do. Okay. You turn it into a fucking Hardy Boy shit where a serial killer comes to town and you got Finney and Gwen on the case. And Gwen is using your premonitions and Finney's talking to it's ghosts and it's good. like Scooby Doo and the gang. It's pretty like good. coming around. That's pretty <laughs> and trying good. to catch this serial killer. <laughs> if I if I had to pitch a sequel, it would yeah. be that years later they try to forget about it, but they still oh. have kind of like repressed their psychic abilities. You know, just to forget about all the trauma. And then s- kidnappings start happening again. A copycat? Maybe. But, and you think it's a copycat. And it's so Finny. they try to, no, I don't like that one. But, and they try to like, so they have to use their psychic powers to see what it is. And it's yeah. the ghost of Ethan Hawke. Oh. And he's that's managed to come back through whatever ghost shit was going on with the boys and honestly this revenge. should be two and three and then for four it's let's see we do serial killer then we do ethan hawk as a ghost then we do i think white phone <laughs> <laughs> and then the moment for that monochromatic phone <laughs> <laughs> bronze pigmatic phone yeah. i think these are great ideas uh Thank joe you. hill scott derrickson give us a call mm-hmm. we can make the movie we can write a movie we, yeah. marcus we just watched this movie, you can watch movie. <laughs> uh, if we didn't have day jobs like these people don't because their real jobs are making movies uh-huh. we would have to and had time we could do it fear cut of death the brown phone brown phone no, that's 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 the shitty spinoff where it's about like taking a shit while with your ghost powers and what it's 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 their Ooh, five minute shorts i know they're what five minute shorts is. where ghosts call you while you're on the shitter that's what? pretty good like abcs of death like little horror shorts but it's ghost yeah. calling i was gonna yeah. say a phone that ghosts call you and when you pick up you poop immediately yours is better and it's like an epidemic that's going around everybody's pooping all the time mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. the whole town is filled with shit <laughs> brown is <laughs> filled with brown I don't know if there's much more I have to say about this film. I've praised the kids a lot, and mm-hmm. I will praise them again. Because and Ethan Hawke. There was sold this film. Ethan Hawke was good, but they didn't give him enough to do. Like, I, I think the kids were so, carry the movie. Like, that's they were fair. so good. I think Ethan you know? Hawke did the best with what he had. And 100%. I was when he came impressed. down scary. those couple of times. Oh, and when Ethan Hawke sat on that chair... Oh, oh right? Ethan Hawk. That was sitting scary. on that chair. It really was. I'm making was fun terrifying. a little bit, but like, but they didn't have him do a lot. No, he <laughs> sat on a point. chair and then he came down and was like, hey, little boy. And gave him apple or gave him eggs like three times. Yeah. Oh my goodness. God. This movie could have been. I'm surprised I at the, the I'm surprised at how high of a score this movie has. Are you? No. Because it's Why simple. Not? People like simple. People like simple horror movies. Some people don't like like complicated like I think the conceit of the film is good and I think the actors like pull it off well. But you know? I watched like, I so think... many movies with the same exact level of quality that have sixties and seventies on Ron Tomatoes. Na- name one. What does ICU have? That was a similar. But that's movie. not as big as it this was movie. better. No, I'm not as but big. It's... But I'm just mean movies. Oh, you're saying it did well because it was big. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm, okay, it's more mainstream appeal. You know. What did um Halloween get? Oh, fucking probably a lot. Halloween 2018 got a... Not to, to, the new one. What did the new one get? I'm looking uh 79%. Wow. I like that movie more than this one. You like the second Halloween, the second of the new Halloween movies more? Oh, I thought we were talking about the first no, one. No, the second of the new Halloween movies. Oh, dude, the first one got 79%. That's bad. The that movie's great. It deserves more than that. That's what I, I agree. Halloween Kills received holy shit 30 percent, 39 percent. audience score 66 <laughs> percent. that movie has has actors has money behind it has legacy behind it but that's just a bad movie this is like a disappointing movie this mm. movie's not that bad like it's not that's that the bad. thing like like there's it's not that bad like there's not there's things we like look at and make sure of yeah but it but when you watch halloween kills we can watch one of the we can make one of those youtube videos that tells like a joke yeah, yeah, per yeah, minute yeah. because yeah. of how bad it is this one it was boring lexi that was a good point yeah i yeah. think this one is just a little boring 
Yeah, I agree. And boring isn't that bad. No. Compared to bad. No. But I it's so interesting. I don't understand critics like in any way whatsoever because yeah i feel like i'm oh, sorry i'm adjusting because i see myself just sinking to like just being eyes <laughs> at the bottom <laughs> um i feel like this movie i don't understand critics because i feel like this movie does deserve a decent score i think maybe a 70 percent solid 70 percent it's a well-crafted movie with some mistakes and it could have been better well let's play this game really quick how what what percentage do you think don't breathe has I would say 85. No, 88. Yeah. All right. What about Sinister? That was a great film. So, oh, Ethan Hawke's in that. Yeah, 100%. Uh, oh. uh, it makes sense that he was in this too. It makes sense. Um, yeah. I want to say 89%. 63%. Whoa. I think it was good. Indie movie. It's an indie movie. People don't like indie movies. God. That's, that that's, is that's, wild that's, to me. I don't understand. It really it. makes a difference. You I don't know? understand. It. There's that this really whole... makes a difference. Part of being a critic that is just like, oh, it's cool to like this movie. I'll like it too. And, you know, it's annoying. Well, how much do you think I See You has? I think that has like a 79%. You looked. It's fucking exactly 79. Yeah, you fucking, I hate you. Yeah, yeah. you I didn't fucking look. Have. I didn't look. Oh, my God. I mean, God. I did look when I watched the film. Oh, sure, sure. So it was probably me, in my brain two, somewhere. Give me two more good horror movies so we can gauge like what this. Recent good horror movies? What do you think? Oh, Hereditary. What is Hereditary? Hereditary is like 98%, man. That has to be fucking... 90 percent hell yeah get out that must have that like has, a 60 95 that, okay get out is 98 98 perfect 98. because it is like popular it has buzz it's, it's mainstream great. It's, it's good mainstream. it's great it's, yeah it's yeah yeah okay what about us us what is about us, lower score though how much i want to say that one's 92 percent or something 93 you're good at this give me another horror movie this is fun <laughs> give me two more give me two horror movies this is fun good oh jason uh, x jason x jason oh, x what do you think jason that x one has 25 percent. 19 percent. 25 25 percent audience yeah. score that's good give me two more two more give me two you're loving this this is fun <laughs> yeah, it's fun you're impressive you're impressive. what i have to also come up with the movie uh, because Leprechaun? i don't know uh, Lapra- that's a hard one because i'm trying I'm trying to like this one. I won't like know this one. I will get wrong. good movies. Like I can't. Oh, think of yeah, that's true. My head. Leprechaun's not a good movie. What do you think? 62%. 27. Oh, my God. Leprechaun crush you. Okay. What about Texas Chainsaw Mask? That one has no like 89% done. or some shit. Like that's a good the movie. Netflix. No, the, the Netflix, Netflix one. Oh, I think you meant no the original. Done. Yeah, no. Texas After Chainsaw Mask. Look up the original because no I do think it's like somewhere around there. The original has to have like a fucking 50 no, 27%. I don't think anybody liked the 31. Yeah. Is 1974, is that right? Yeah, I think so. Is Chainsaw two words in the original? Maybe. I don't know. I don't want to look it up because then I'm going to see the score. Is 1974 correct? Yeah. It looks right. That looks like my leather face. Yeah. Uh, what percentage? 89. Exactly. Yeah. You fucking looked. <laughs> no, I didn't look. I'm not looking. One I more. One more okay, that's going to be do it, do it, really do it, do it. hard. Okay. Ooh. The Exorcist. Oh God, that's a. I feel like that's a pretentious one that a lot of people like. Three. So I want to say eighty-eight percent. Eighty-four. Fuck yeah! I almost gave it higher. I was going to give it higher. That was good. I'm great 84. at this, guys. Um, the Shining. We're gonna have a podcast episode of me just naming. The Shining. The Shining. Oh, The Shining. That's hard because when The Shining came out, everyone hated it. So I don't know what Rotten Tomatoes counts. If it counts like all reviews of all time or just when it came out, all professional credits, it's usually like somewhere between 60 and 100 critics for how it's long professional critics. Let's let's be generous and say that people like 100 reviews. At some point, there's 100 reviews. People after Rotten Tomatoes was invented, right? Because the movie came out before Rotten Tomatoes was invented. I don't think they looked up old articles and uploaded them. So I'm going to say that it was popular around that time. So it probably has like a 90 percent. 83 83 that's fair the the reviews start in 2000 i guess that's when ron tomatoes came up probably but you know what the most recent preview uh, review is from july 26 2022 yeah i don't know how Rotten tomatoes works so i honest. think if you're a professional reviewer it counts it hmm no matter when how you, you review it professional re- yeah i think okay so. guys we're gonna flood rotten to- that's we're gonna why professional th- reviewers and flood rotten tomatoes well remember that's uh a lot of people thought that's what happened for like captain marvel right 
Oh, yeah, that's true. I feel like... Wow, honestly, this is generous. Captain Marvel's Rotten Tomato score is 79%. But the audience is, <laughs> but the audience is 45. Okay. That's interesting. But, oh, but the audience has 100, over 100,000 ratings. Holy shit. Oh, Audiences so, do so, hate Brie on. Larson, though. I don't know so why. So that's a, over 100, 100... And Get Out only has over 50,000. Wow. Get Out's a bigger movie than Captain Marvel is. No, um, no maybe not. No, what it's about, not. It's a Marvel movie. What about Avengers? What about Endgame? What about Endgame? Endgame only has 50,000 reviews. That's there it bad. is. See? That's bad. That's, yeah. that's hate so reviewing. So that Captain Marvel, yeah, that's hate reviewing. Yeah, that's like half of them. Yeah. Okay, guys. Uh, so, so Marcus, is there anything you like to talk about for Black? We got distracted. We got maybe we, we cut got that out. Just... Maybe we cut that out from the podcast. Nah, we didn't have a game this episode. That's fine. We're at the <laughs> end. Do you have anything else to say? I don't have anything to say. I have nothing else to say about this movie. I thought that it could have done more. Could have been more. That's the... That's, that's it, problem. right? That's it. Hundred percent. That's the whole thing. Yeah. That's our whole review. They could have done more. Yeah. It could have been better. <laughs> also, I think that this is been maybe better. a, a, a maybe we can start this company. But I think there should be if there's going to be abuse in movies, I think that there should be someone on set like gauging like an intimacy like, coordinator, like an intimacy coordinator that is like gauging what is going to be opinion, what's okay to show, how is it okay to portray this, what's like interesting ways to portray it that isn't just like are you using it correctly should you have it in the movie at all does it make sense stuff like that oh if you wanted to do all the work but you wanted me to be your salesman for it i could totally pitch right okay sounds good because i don't uh, i wouldn't feel comfortable doing that but if you did then i would support you That's totally totally makes sense to me. Yeah, yeah. Gosh, what what writer percent do you think Uncharted has? Oh man, I don't know. I'm not good at that that one. I'm gonna say like fifty seven percent, forty one percent. You're not too okay. bad. Okay. Oh shit, guys. Oh, there's a game. There's a game on you're like line hopping. that streamers do where you have to like decide which one was rated more, this movie or that movie, uh-huh. guys. If you want us, Marcus, Maisley, and me to just commentate, for us to play that online on the... You know what? We're going to do that. Yeah. We're going to play that game on Twitch, 100%. Guys, check out us out at twitch.tv slash now. Try this oh, cast. Oh, you know what's we are gonna would do be that. fun? I don't know if we get what's a DMC aid, but there's a movie version of Wordle that shows you a very quick snippet of a movie and you get five tries and each try they show you a little bit more of the movie and it's a daily game that i've kind of half been doing and it's very fun i think we should do a stream where we play all these movies yeah yeah that sounds good there's one about budget there's one about rotten tomato score movie soundtrack there's this one you're talking about hell yeah we'll do that soon guys yeah but before that next time next week we are watching Marcus's just chat. Marcus's Marcus's challenge R R R mm-hmm. on twitch.tv slash now try this cast 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can also leave us a five star review on iTunes or Spotify. It helps the show a lot. You can also get us everywhere at now try this cast, but the show couldn't exist without our lovely patrons. If you would like to become one of them, it's patreon.com slash now try this cast. Come and join us. Help us decide the challenges. Come and be a part of the community. We're planning on starting a Discord soon. We would love to have you there. Uh, and that's it. That's Those are all the things. How 100%. <laughs> and, you know, chat with us. Reach out to us. On, we're on all the socials. We like to hear from you guys. What do you want to see? What do you want us to change? What do you want us to do? We love it. No? What's that face? Oh, I'm just wrong? looking at my face. I'm just making oh, faces. Okay. As you're, as you're. <laughs> okay, guys. I'm thinking if I could distract you, I'm doing it. Thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate the time that you spend listening to our silly little podcast. So we love you. Remember to go out there and try some things. Good night. Good night. Friends get together so they can try things. I couldn't find Darren, so I freaked out. I also had to pee. She's in the basement on the phone. Did you, you, did you think you lost her? I don't know. Just, I was like, did she leave? Did she get, what's it called? God, what's that religious thing? Uh, abducted? Oh, a religious You thing. know what I mean? We're like raptured. <laughs> well, you'd find her shoes. That's true. Yeah. That's yeah. very true. Because everyone knows everyone in heaven is naked. That? Or barefoot. No, no, no naked.
full on nude. They're just naked. Yeah, I well, know. it would be tra- obviously it would be super tragic if Darren ever left you. But God, to do it like during the podcast, what a move! That would be rough. You think everything's fine, and then you get off the show, Darren? Honestly, that might happen. Who knows? <laughs> 